from Hollywood. It's the Tom Likas Show. I got it. I got it. And now. And now. Here he is. Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. Oh, I am your host. I love this story. I love this story. Another shocker. Another shocker. Comedian Wanda Sykes. I thought for sure she was straight. I can't believe she's a lesbian. And the story here from ABC News says, uh, when comedian Wanda Sykes disclosed during a rally in Las Vegas this week that she had been in a same-sex marriage since October. No one cheered louder than those who faced the double indemnity of being black and gay. Sykes, 44, who stars in the television series The New Adventures of Old Christine, said... You know, I don't really talk about my sexual orientation. I didn't feel like I had to. I was just living my life, not necessarily in the closet, but I was living in my life. But, it says here, living life in the spotlight as black and gay is twice as hard, according to other blacks, who say they are stigmatized by society at large for their sexual orientation, and again by their own homophobic culture. Sykes, who is unavailable for comment, is one of only a handful of black gay celebrities to protest California's Proposition 8, the gay marriage ban, that was passed with the help of a coalition of religious groups, many of them black. For blacks, the victory of President-elect Obama signaled the promise of a new era of racial equality. But gays, like Sykes, see Proposition 8 as an assault on their civil rights. And the aftermath of the vote has opened old wounds between gays and blacks. Being black and gay is, quote, pervasive in the entertainment industry, said Terrence Dean, who worked for MTV and other networks. I've known many celebrities who are on the DL lifestyle. Oh, really? It says here, and I'm just reading this story from ABCnews.com. For people of color, they are not as accepting as they are for Ellen DeGeneres, Rosie O'Donnell, Lance Bass, George Michael, and Elton John. I haven't seen anyone who is black and openly gay on the national celebrity A-list. Dean told ABC News, we also get it at home from our parents and grandparents and don't want to bring shame to the family name. We know who we are, but we don't out them. Dean, who is 40 and wrote about coming out in his book, Hiding in Hip Hop, said he had to buck the popular black culture that worships machismo, the whole bling thing, and the gangster thug lifestyle. But he said Sykes sets a more accepting stage for other black celebrities who are gay. And the story goes on. Now, we saw some of this coming out uh, when the uh, protests against Proposition 8. Actually, they were um, really, really angry protests here in Los Angeles, and they were all over the streets. We saw some of this coming out here. And we heard many people saying things like, well, you know, Obama ran for president, and so all the blacks went out, and they were all voting for a change, and they all voted for Proposition 8. And remember, for those of you who don't live in California, you voted for Proposition 8 means you're against gay marriage. If you're in favor of gays having the right to get married, you voted against Proposition 8. Proposition 8 won. That made gay marriage unconstitutional for the moment in California. 
Um, I'm trying to understand this. Is there friction between blacks and gays? No better way to find out than to talk to nothing but blacks and gays and see what this is all about. Gays of all colors, blacks of all sexual orientations. You can call me here at 1-800-5800-TOM. Let's have this out, out in the open. 1-800-5800-866. If you are black or you are gay or you are black and gay, I want to find out, is there friction between blacks and gays? If so, what is it that blacks don't like about gays? Is it fair to say that Proposition 8 won in California because blacks voted in big numbers and therefore they voted for Proposition 8? By the way, I don't care how many blacks voted. Blacks are 15% of the population. <laughs> let's, let's generously say 20% in California. Uh, you couldn't win that election without plenty of whites. <laughs> it doesn't matter whether you're a candidate or a proposition. But that's beside the point. That'll be for blacks and gays to answer here. So I don't care if you're black or if you're gay or lesbian. That's who I want to talk to this hour. I want to talk to you about whether this friction exists, how it manifests itself, and find out how you feel. If you're black, how do you feel about gays? If you're gay, how do you feel about blacks at this point? Let's have it out. Come on, Tom like is 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. It's the Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show at 1-800-5800-TOM. All right, if you're black, if you're gay or lesbian, we will talk to you this hour about the friction that people are talking about between blacks and gays. What's the deal? 1-800-5800-TOM. It's Jim on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. How's it going, Tom? It's going okay. All right. Uh, like, I don't really listen to this show that much, but I got friends who love you, so we're on our way home from... A trip, and we're listening. I got a call in. I'm black. My little brother's gay. I knew it. I knew it all the time growing up. But he never said nothing to uh, to his dad. He never said nothing to mom. Mom knew. She wanted to pretend like she didn't know. Dad had no idea. But if he did, me and my little brother, we knew. If dad found out, he'd be kicked out of the house. He'd be denounced as his son. You feel me? I do. So it's like. I don't know. It's hard to speak in a general term, so it's hard to say, like, it's like this with every family. But I know for mine, for my neighborhood, I'm from South Los Angeles, from my neighborhood, from my friends, all of our moms and dads, anything that's wrong with your family, mom's going to ignore it, dad's going to make you too scared to say something about it, you feel? I do. And so then what happens when your brother grows up? Does he never say anything about it, or does he start talking about it when he's an adult? It, when you're an adult, when you leave the t when you leave the house, you can do whatever the hell you want. So uh, you know what I mean. It's like once you turn 18, once you turn 20, once you're out, you just do you do whatever you want. You can be yourself now. Mom, and dad are too old; they're not in your life anymore. You call them on holidays, so you know what I'm saying. Can you come home on holidays if you're black and you're gay? As long as mom and dad don't know, you can do whatever you want. On All holidays. right, but you can't even say anything as an adult then. Well, I don't know. Like I said, that's how my family is. Right. But I mean, to be honest with you, this whole Prop 8 thing, and man, my little, it's hard for me to say this, but I gotta be dead honest with you. I have a real different view on homosexuality. I just, I, I mean, going back to 1960, universally, it was a mental disorder taken off the list. I mean, within evolution, within animals, it's counterpro counterproductive with, with, uh, with evolution, it's counterproductive with the species. And I just feel like, I mean, so many people hate me for saying this, but I feel like it is a mental disorder. You know what I'm saying? I feel like I, I, it's hard to say. People like, how can you be so insensitive? But, man, I'm sorry, for, I'm sorry if I offend people out there, but I got to be honest. I, I, it just, it doesn't seem, uh, I'm just going to say, I, just, I feel it's a mental disorder. I feel like it's a problem because, like I said, evolution, species, it's counterproductive. It does nothing. I mean, 
for 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 if our whole society went gay, boom, stop, done. The human race is over. You know, well, what I'm the, the whole society is never gonna go uh, go gay for one thing, and for another, there's plenty of straight people like me who don't have kids and don't plan to. Uh, I'm not producing any children. Uh, so should I be stopped from having sex or getting a job? Uh, oh, of course not. I'm not saying that, but I mean, I just, I, I, I kind of. I don't know. It's hard for me to say this because I can just hear the millions of people out there who are just going to get pissed by me saying this right now. But it's just how I feel. And then you have religious groups that are saying, you know, God told them it's wrong. For me, it's not about God telling me it's wrong. It's just I feel like there's no logic in it, and I feel logically it's wrong. Now, do you, makes... do you, do you, I understand what you say. Now, do you, do you tell your brother he's mentally defective? or? I would n No, I can't say that. I can't say that. But this is just, this is just me. It's how I feel. I mean... Oh, it's 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 hard to talk about this because it's it's kind of an out it's an out there way of thinking. You know what I mean? I mean, I'm sure you're thinking to yourself right now, like, is this guy serious? He really thinks he's a mother. Are you kidding me? So, oh, so does uh, anyone know how you feel about this? Uh, not really. I mean, just me. <laughs> just you and everyone else listening right now. You feel right, but nobody knows who you are. You're anonymous, so. It's, but I mean. I mean, I talked to my professors at school, and, you know, they don't like that I said it, but they said they can see some of what I'm thinking. Hang on a second here, Jim. Lisa, what did you want to say to Jim? I think you're completely insane. And a mental disorder? Come on, guy. And not only that, I'm, I'm a black woman. I'm 29 years old. I'm an attorney. And I'm completely, I, I voted no on Proposition 8. Especially because hip discrimination on all levels is a hypocrisy. Not long ago, loving, loving versus loving was a case in the Supreme Court where a black woman could not get married to a white man, and it's the, it's it's the same discrimination. Telling someone that they can't marry someone that they love just because you want to put religion into it, and first of all, you should keep religion and the state separated. There's a reason why that's in place. Religion, religion should have no, no place in the law. Oh and man, I, I can't agree with that at all. That's, I mean, this whole country was built off of religion. Are you kidding me? That's ridiculous. Where, where do we get our ethics and morals from if religion, if religion is nowhere to be found? Are you, I mean, I can't agree with I that say, at all. I didn't say religion is nowhere to be found. I said religion and and law should be completely separated. One, I mean, if you want to, I mean, talking about abortion. Pro law versus you know pro life and and things like that. It's all once again down to religion or or do you want to or is it about law and setting a precedent? This is a horrible precedent because if you can discriminate, if back in the day you could discriminate between a black woman and a white man getting married, and now you can discriminate between two people of the same sex getting married. I mean, it's just the same mentality of discrimination. And I'm, I'm going to need a little more proof, scientific proof that, you know, being homosexual is a mental disorder. Because that's just ridiculous. That's insane. All right. Well, you know, you say it's insane, but I mean, universally through our nation and other nations before 1965, we were all insane thinking it was a mental disorder. And then secondly, when you say that religion and state can't have anything to do with each other, it's ridiculous. The state protects religion. And everyone has choices. Everyone has opinions. And all these opinions exactly, are Exactly, exactly. And, and, and now you're going to use religion to tell people that they can't have a choice in who they marry? That's why you have to keep separated. What do you mean? Just for, that, just for that exact same reason. And you're, and, I mean, what do you think about the fact that the Bible was used to justify slavery? What do you mean by religion using religion? Religion has had its stand on homosexuality since the beginning. No, religion isn't popping up out of nowhere trying to sway people. They've thought this way since the beginning of time. The Bible has been written. There's verses in there about homosexuality. Right. So no, no exactly. And, and the belief. Bible is all, is all up to interpretation. The same Bible people, the same church-going people use the Bible to justify slavery. The same people? That's a fact. That's a people? fact. That's the same people. Look, I I can't stand it when people try to compare racism and the homosexuality to the discrimination against them. It's, I can't. It's the same. It's, it's the not. same thing. It's discrimination. Right. It's the same thing. It's the you know, same I'm thing. I'm interested. Because I'm in interested. the 60s and back in the day, it was about 
It was about black people not being human beings, black people being compared to animals, being subhuman. And now you're and and now you're basically saying the same thing about homosexuals. You're basically saying that that there's something wrong with them, that they have a mental disorder. No, okay, so I have a question for you. And, so I just, say, and I just feel like it's important for me as a black woman to call in because black people are getting a really bad name. Not all black people are homophobic. Black people are getting a bad name? Are you? Come on now. No, black uh, people, black people are getting a bad name as far as being homophobic. And, and I know a lot of people are thinking that this is... Uh, this is hypocrisy because it's like, look, a black man was elected president, the first black president of the United States. And in the same token, you're discriminating against gay people. So I'm just calling in to say that not all black people are homophobic. Not all black people think badly about homosexuals. And I think it's very sad that people like Ellen DeGeneres and, and, and her wife, Portia de Rossi, and all those people can't marry who they love. I think religion should stay out of it. If you're against it, don't don't be homosexual. All right. Um, you know what I mean? But don't stop. Don't stop people from from living their lives and loving whoever they want to love. All right. On that note, Jim, Lisa, thank you for the calls. We continue here. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Trying to uh, figure out what's going on between blacks and gays. So if you're black or gay, you can call us at 1-800-5800-TOM. Let's say hello here to Jasmine on the Tom Likas show. Hey, Tom. Hey. Um, the way the I feel like maybe black people, you know, from they're just, you know, racism has been coming, you know, for blacks for a long time. So now um, a lot of black people who are gay, you know, maybe within their families, their families, you know, they're like, we already have the black thing. Yeah, we already have the black thing going for ourselves. So now, you know, you don't want to be black and gay, you know, so it's even harder for them to even come out. So then now, you know, since gay people are starting to come out, they feel, I, I think that they feel like, you know, gay people need to, um, I think that finding it as an excuse for somebody to be pretty much like, you know, to be racist against somebody since, you know, now we have a black person. No, that's not what she wanted to say. What she wanted to say, this is her girlfriend. What she wanted to say, <laughs> let me, she's nervous. Hey. What she wanted to say is I, I personally firsthand know, because I know a lot of gay people, there are a lot of closet black gay men, and I feel like it's so driven into them that, you know, it's like the forbidden thing. So they go out there, they do this, but they're secretive about it because it's driven into them. So it's like the other lady said, it's very, you know, they're being hypocrites, and it's very much so that, you know, it's just from a very young age, it's, it's for whatever reason in their culture, it's it's not acceptable. Now, do you, and, have, you know, do you girls think you've ever dated anybody on the DL? Have we ever? Yes. Oh, uh, no. No, I haven't. How would you but, know? They're on the DL. Well, oh, how do I know that they're on the DL? No, 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 no. How do you know you haven't dated someone on the DL? They're on the DL. Well, maybe. I mean, I haven't. I haven't ever. I'm white and she's Mexican. I just know I have gay friends. I have gay guy friends of every race, and I'm just saying that I know that there are a lot of closet gay black men. I know that for a fact. Like you'll see them somewhere and you'll never know. Like I used to work with a guy and then I saw him at a club, and I would have never in a million years knew. And he was embarrassed when he saw me there. Now, so, are you straight or gay? Me, I'm. I'm gay. You're gay. So you're both lesbians. Yes. Okay. That's like the friend you were talking to. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I just want to let you guys know, and I love your show. Thank you. Okay. Appreciate the call. See, one girl called in, and the other one took over the conversation. Then I want to. Uh, is she straight? Is she gay? Well, what's the deal? Who wears the pants in that family? And not only that, of course they go out with guys on the D. I thought they were straight black women calling in, and they were not. Wow. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Eric on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, what's up, Tom? Not much. Uh, well, uh, me, I'm, a, I'm an African-American male, and um, I live in Texas, so I wasn't able to vote for or against the proposition. But I'm like you. I feel like people should do what they want to do, whatever makes them happy. I don't care. Um, I have um, one of my best friends. She's a lesbian. You know, we smoke cigars together. So um, she lives with her girlfriend, and I have no problem with it. The one issue I have is um, I, I feel like everyone should have their own civil rights or whatnot, but there's a big difference between gay civil rights and, and black civil rights because if you see a black person, you know 
you know they're black from a distance. But as far as a gay or a lesbian person, you don't know unless they tell you or you see well, wait them a minute, now, engaged gay, in that. Gay people don't agree. Gay people say they've got gaydar. I'm talking about from a person who is not gay or whatnot. I, I, you, I might work with someone who's gay, but so, I don't know. So when I you saw it. Wanda Sykes, you couldn't tell she was a lesbian? I didn't. I couldn't. I thought so she you're, was funny you're as hell. So you're as shocked as I am. I, I was. I, I thought she was funny as hell. I even thought she was kind of sexy. So Were you shocked when you found out Rosie O'Donnell was a lesbian? No, I wasn't. Oh, you could tell because she was a lesbian. I, well, no, just she's not that attractive anyway, so what kind of guy would touch her, though? Well, wait a minute. <laughs> well, I'm just being funny now. I'm sorry. Tom. I'm sorry. Tom. I couldn't tell, but I'm just saying she's not the most attractive person. But I really couldn't tell, and and I could care less. Plenty so of unattractive always... straight women go on a cruise. <laughs> I, I just came up what not too long ago. Uh, am I right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you want to see unattractive straight women go on a cruise? I, t I totally agree. I mean, I hadn't been on a cruise before this year in like 10 years. And I was like, okay, I'm going to go. I, you know, just graduate. I'm going to have me a little fun, you know, meet some, you know, ladies, you know, whatever. Yeah. But it was just like old people, wrinkles, uh, you know. Mm. It was, it was. I don't know what to say. Yeah, I understand. Thanks for the call. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. Why all this friction between black people? And gay people. 1-800-5800-TOM. Like is 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Likas Show. It's Tom Likas Show. 1-800-5800-TOM. I'm not black. I'm not gay. So I have to call blacks and gays in here at 1-800-5800-866. Try to find out. If there really is all this friction, for God's sake. Monica on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Uh, hi, Tom. My name is Monica. Um, I uh, have a little sore throat, so I hope you can understand. My voice doesn't sound too bad, but I just moved down here to the South Central area out of Burbank, and I'm a male to female uh, transgendered person. I still have my male genitalia. I have breasts. You can go to my website and take a look at me and all that, but when I moved down, I'm uh, attracted to females, okay, very, very much. I love them women. And, me. and, and you're, you're black? No, I'm, I'm Hispanic. You're Hispanic? Yes. And, uh, we were asking uh, people who are gay or black to call in. Are you one or the other? Well, the reason I was calling is because I have been in the middle of that friction between blacks and gays because I was telling that Dino or whoever does that. They, oh, wait, they, wait. What were um, you telling Dino? Dean, step in here a second. Let's find out what uh, she was telling Dean. All right, uh, Dean, step in. Oh, come on. <laughs> Monica says that uh, <laughs> you're bringing me in on a transgender call, dude. Yes, Monica says that you, you and she were having a conversation. What were you talking about? <laughs> she said, "I guess she was talking to me." So, uh, I guess uh, Monica. Well, we'll confirm it now. That was Dina. Yes, it was Monica. Okay. Uh, Monica is a recent uh, transplant, obviously, and she moved herself to the hood uh, as a transgendered individual, and she f already feels the friction uh by she feels that black people are really really mad at this at her for being a transgender individual so she feels the full force that's why she's feeling the friction. i bet this is why she's feeling the friction <laughs> i'm not going to explain what you just did um she she feels the full force of the black community because she is a bit different in that she's a man acting as a woman she hasn't gone through the surgery yet so she just Moved to the hood and couldn't have picked a worse place to uh, be there as a transgendered individual. Well, I'm glad we had you to explain that, Dean. <sighs> Thank you, sir. There we go. A transgender. Dean. I am not gay. By the way, Dean knows exactly how it feels because he moved to a gay neighborhood. <laughs> did anybody get Monica's website? Did, uh, did Dean get Monica's website? Yeah, let's check that out. I'm going through a very rough time, but you can go to my website and see what I look like. 1-800-5800-TOM. <laughs> That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to uh, Mike of the Tom Likas Show. Hey, hey, Tom. I'm okay. Hey, uh, as a black man, I, I can say that I think it's definitely cultural within the black community. 
you know, being so steeped in, in the church and so forth. It is uh, just one thing that I've experienced through my lifetime. And with my extended family, I, I happen to be straight, 44 years old with kids, but, you know, I have a cousin who's gay, I have a nephew who's gay, and if, uh, you know, they were to say anything to some members of my extended family, they would just be ostracized. It's just, it's a, it's a cultural, um, I would say it's almost a cultural ignorance. You know, we're just, uh, you know, many in the black communities aren't as progressive as some other races. Um, it, it's, uh, Interesting that you say that, and uh, you know, kind of ironic. Not necessarily uh, because of that uh, ill-advised TV commercial they did, where they they tried comparing uh, gay marriage to the civil rights movement, but simply because um, generally people assume wrongly, I think, uh, that Black Americans are just simply what we call progressive, meaning like politically progressive. But in reality, uh, it's much more uh, complicated than that. Yeah, in, in a lot of ways, we're, we're extremely conservative in, in some of our mannerisms, you know. And, and it, it, I think it really derives, derives from the church. You know, my, my mother's side of the family, my father's side of the family are all raised Baptist. And you know, we, we ended up converting, my immediate family ended up converting to Catholicism and raised in the suburbs. And, you know, I got a lot of exposure to a lot of different things. But I, I talked to some of my family members on the East Coast, and they are just extremely, you know, you know, religious, and and uh, most that's probably most of the reason why they're just very much opposed to homosexuality. I mean, and I'm conservative. I mean, I work in the military, one of the most conservative institutions around, and I see I don't really see any problem with homosexuality. It's just I don't even call it mental. It's just the way you grow up it's just the way you are it's innate it's something you can't change you know i didn't choose to be a heterosexual it's just the way i turned out well i i happen to believe that too but apparently there's a lot of people who don't and uh, now we're hearing about all of the friction between blacks and gays is that really true i don't know lorena on the tom like show hello hi hi so tom I, um, my mom is gay, and, can you hear me? Of course! Okay, so, my mom is gay, and, um, I'm black, and, you know, everybody knows that my mom is gay, but... Well, I, um, did, I don't know your mom. <laughs> well, I'm saying in the family. I mean, they, can tell, the they family. can tell by looking, or what? No, 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 not at all. She's out, but, is what you're saying. Yes. Yeah. Okay, exactly. not like the other guy who called earlier who said you can't tell if people are gay. <laughs> well, some you can, some you can't. He was shocked to hear about Wanda Sykes. Shocked! <laughs> I think he was the only one. <laughs> but, um, so, it's interesting. Right before the election, um, all of the family hung out. My mom wasn't there, but all of the family hung out. And we kind of had a debate, a discussion about Proposition 8. And um, my husband, my brother-in-law, my sister-in-law, and my brother voted yes on Prop 8. And your mother? And my mother. I'm sure she voted. I'm sure she voted no. <laughs> well, you can never be sure. Yeah. I'm, There's I'm a lot of self-hating individuals out there. You never know. <laughs> um, I'm, sure she, I'm sure she voted no, but... Um, but we were having this, this the discussion, and I'm like, well, you know, how can you guys even consider voting yes on um, on Prop 8? Because it's basically, you know, it's discrimination. And my brother-in-law said, well, you know what? They have civil unions, and we have marriages. And I'm like, well, that's separate but equal. You get, we get marriages, and they get civil unions. That's, he was like, well, we could just, we could just make it so... You know, they have the same exact rights as us, but they don't get married. So they have separate drinking fountains, too? <laughs> That's what I was saying. I'm like, you're going back. I mean, you're not. I mean, it, it was already looked at at the, at the California Supreme Court. And the California, California Supreme Court basically said it was unconstitutional and it was wrong. And I'm like, you know, so how can you? But I'm, I'm, I'm very surprised that it passed. Actually, and I'm and I'm surprised that the gay community didn't have all these rallies before, 
I'm surprised they didn't get together and have all these rallies before and be more outspoken about it because the only thing I ever saw or heard really were the commercials on radio and a couple of sprinkled TV commercials, and that was about it. Well, but, that, but that's because uh, gay marriage is legal, or at least it has been legal. Well, it was up for being overturned, so they should have been. They should have been more outspoken about it. They should have. They well, should I have think rallied. they were allowing the TV commercials to do the talking. Uh, and who knows? Maybe they should have been more outspoken, or maybe they should have been woulda, well, coulda, shoulda. Yeah. But well, now, now a lot know, of people, a lot of people are are saying. And I don't agree with this uh, simply because of the numbers, okay? Uh, 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 black Americans make up somewhere, depending on where you live, around 15% of the American population. And I would say maybe where we live, it's closer to 20%. And I would say in other places, it's closer to 10% or less. Um, you can't... You can't win anything strictly. If every black person voted yes on something or no on something, it wouldn't be enough. Right. Proposition 8 won because lots of Mormons and Catholics ran out there, well, most of whom were white, uh, who went out there and voted in favor of it. That's why it won. But here's the deal. Uh, a lot of people are saying, well, because Barack Obama was running, a lot of the blacks who don't normally vote, they went out and voted, and they voted for Prop 8. You've heard that, yeah. right? <laughs> I don't, I don't, I mean, I don't necessarily, I don't necessarily agree with that. I, I think a lot of it comes from the church and the Bible and so forth and what the Bible says. And the Bible says it's wrong, therefore, this is what it is. But I think people select what they want to, you know, stand on the soapbox about because it's like, oh, so the Bible says that's wrong. Okay, well, you know, the Bible also says, you know, sex before marriage is wrong. Are you a virgin? You know, so it's like they want to they want to pick and choose when they're trying to make a point. You know, and I don't know. I think it, it was a really hard choice. Um, I kind of went back and forth with it, just not exactly knowing how I was going to vote until you know I got actually to the ballot and voted. But um, I don't know. I, it was. It's. It's. It's hard coming from that place where you have a family member who's gay and so forth, but I think, you know, the, the yes on eight people use scare tactics and they, you know, if they would have left the kids out of it and said, you know, didn't say, hey, it's going to be taught in school and your kids are going to be forced to learn about this, then I think it probably wouldn't have passed, but when they, you start involving people's kids, that was a hot button and that's basically, that's why I think it passed. All right. Lorena? Thank you. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. Oh, what is all this talk about friction between black people and gay people? The only way to find out is to invite black people and gay people to be our only callers this hour. Tom like it. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Likas Show. Show. 1-800-5-800-TOM is our telephone number. Mike and Matoto again. Thanks for being part of the program. We appreciate it. All right, here we are. Blacks and gays. Is there all this friction between them? Dana on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. How are you? I'm doing great. Good. I was just calling in to say I'm, I'm an African-American female, and um, I voted no on eight because I personally don't think it's anyone's business what anyone is married to. People want to get married, let them get married. I'll tell you what, we've got a terrible connection. We're going to have to get a better one so we can hear you better, and I want to do that, so we will. Eddie on the Tom Likas Show, hello. All right. Eddie's got no connection. Donnie's on the Tom Likas Show, hello. Hello. Yes. Hi. How are you? I'm good. Well, I wanted to make my comment with regard to the friction between gays and blacks. I am a black female, and I think one of the major things one of the callers was saying before is it has to do with upbringing. And, yes, 
most black people have a very religious background, and we're taught that, yes, this is the wrong thing to do. Let me ask a question. I don't mean to be insensitive, obviously, but I have to ask. When you talk about uh, uh, being religious and conservative, mm -hmm. I'm not Christian. I'm an atheist, okay? I'm just asking as an outsider. Okay. Uh, am I mistaken in the black community there are a lot of children born out of wedlock? Yes, there is. And are there a lot of people who have sex outside of marriage? Yes, there is. So where is all this conservatism? Well, I think that when I say conservative, I don't mean in every aspect, because, of course, yes, there is a lot of, um, there are a lot of single parents, child, children born out of wedlock. Yes, there is a lot of drug use. There's a lot of, you know, all these things that would be against the Bible. But this is looked at, and, and those things are not looked at as, oh, great, go out and do them. This thing is looked at as very, quote, unquote, taboo. And I'll say, I have, my sister is a lesbian. And it was very hard for our family to accept it. Some people were kind of like, oh, well, I knew that. Like me, I was like, okay, well, I knew that. Let's move on. But other people were, like, freaking out. We had a family meeting and this whole big thing um, because of her decision to say, hey, this is what I am. This is what I can do with my life. But what I will say is this. This is what I think causes the quote-unquote friction between blacks and gays. My parents, both of which were born in the 50s, my dad was born in Mississippi and my mom here in California. My dad experienced segregation in Mississippi. My mom had to watch why it's here in California. When I walk into any room, typically I'm the only black person there because I work in corporate America. And in the field that I work in, it's pretty much just me. As soon as I walk in the door, they know two things about me. They know that I am black. They know that I am a female. When you are a gay person, no matter what your gender is, when you walk in the room, no one knows that. And for a person to say, oh, well, it's kind of like the civil rights movement, absolutely not. No one is shooting you with a hole. Nobody turns a dog on you, any of that stuff. So that is one of the things that I think when you have people who actually went through this stuff, with the dogs and you can't sit in the back in the front of the bus and all these other things when they hear this stuff they're like wait a minute how dare you equate something like that to something like this it's not the same thing i um I'm, this whole thing confuses me, and I, again, I, I find it hard to believe that it would be a religious thing. It sounds more to uh, more like an intolerance thing. Um, I, I think when I say religious, that's where the undertones come from. That's where that's where it original it originated from. Because if you if you look in the Bible, it says yes, this is wrong. It had the thing with Sodom and Gomorrah, and the whole city fell down, and all that good stuff. So this is the this is the background for it. This is the actual background for it, and then. When you look at black males, one of the biggest things is, as a black man, you are supposed to be strong. And to a lot of black men, ignorantly, they don't look at other black gay men as being strong men. So that that's a thing as well. Interesting. Thank you for that, Donnie. I appreciate the call. 1-800-5800-TOM. It's David on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How are you doing? Doing great. Uh, yeah, I just had a call because I think uh, we're missing a lot of the points here, the basic points. Um, I think the first problem is a lot of people, whether they're black, straight, gay, whatever, believe that homosexuality is a choice. And as long as people believe that, you can't convince them of anything else besides that. And that's the problem. They, they, a lot of people believe that every gay person on this planet is lying when we're saying that we're not making this decision, this is something that we're born with. So it's not a matter of fact of us sitting here going, this is, the, this is akin to being, um, you know, shot with a hose and being dragged around by dogs. This is the basic, a basic thing of saying, we, as, as, as gay men and women, this is not a choice that we have made. So if you're going to use religion to um, institute brand new laws and overturn laws, that's when you get into the civil rights thing. It has nothing to do with us crying about how we're equal to slavery. That's not the point. The point is that we are both black and gay men and women. We are both that way by nature. We, had, we did not make that choice. And when there is somebody who's coming in going, we are going to introduce law and legislation based on our religious beliefs to take something away from you. That's the problem that we have. There's nobody's asking for anything extra. No one's asking um, 
to take any away from the heterosexual couples. We're saying let's let you know let's level the playing field here. You know we don't want anything extra. We just want the same playing ground. You know and and it's really frustrating to watch people. And to listen to people use religion as the reason why they do this. Because if you don't like gay people, if you think it's something that offends you, that is disgusting to you, accept it. You know, just admit it. Admit that you don't like it. But don't use religion. And don't use the fact that there's a couple passages in Leviticus or some random passages that says the gays are bad. There are plenty of other passages that say infidelity is bad, children out of wedlock is bad. I mean, in, in, the, in, the, in the wedding reception, it says till death do us part, yet that is still broken on a regular basis. So using traditional marriage and scary black and white pictures of children crying because they're standing in front of a lesbian wedding, these are the problems that we are facing. We're not facing um, a real a hardcore ignorance of the black community. That's one little facet of it. It's a combination of like terribly misleading commercials and and combination with the ignorance, it scares people. You use the kids, you use black and white photos of them crying, and then you also introduce the fact that, you know, they're saying, you know, that, that, that priests and, our, and fathers are going to be arrested if they don't perform these, these gay marriages. And that's, that's how you scare people into voting yes. Hang on a second, David. Yeah. Joe, what did you want to say to David? Hey, first, let me say, how you doing, Tom? I'm doing great. All right, well, well first, let me say to this guy here... Um, I have a question for you. Yeah. Um, if you say that you're born this way, uh, just as uh, we're born heterosexual, do you believe a person, uh, say someone from NAMBLA, do you think they're born that way? Do you, are, you, somebody, are, you, are you familiar with NAMBLA? Yeah, uh, something about uh, you know, a man and boy love association or something like that. Correct. Yeah, I mean, I think anybody who is... I don't think you can control who you were attracted to. You know, it, I don't think if, if someone is, is attracted to, to kids and to young kids, I say, you know what, that's really sad and I feel sorry for them. But you can't change that. You, you cannot change that. And I had, a, I had a conversation with a heterosexual male um, about the same thing. They go, you know, I believe homosexuality. You're making a choice to be attracted to men. And I go, and on that token, that means that you as a heterosexual male, you are attracted to both females and you are both attracted to men as well. But you're choosing, you are choosing to stay attracted to females. Is that correct? And he's like, no, wait a minute. I'm not attracted to men. And I go, well, that, how you feel about men is how gay men feel about women. And that's all the time we have, guys. The Tom Likas Show.